I'll do you a couple of clips of the welding here. I'll just show you this one. I've just welded this one fully to the flange. I'm going to do this, I'm trying to work this out as I go. So I'm going to start, this one can be welded completely in one hit all the way around. Then I'll do the next one, welding places. Then potentially the end one or one of these will be able to weld all the way in situ. So I only have to actually break off and weld two separately on the bench. So I'll just do you a short clip of welding. I'm using one six filler for the flanges on 150 amps and then I'm dropping down to 100 amps with a one mil filler rod on the uh, on the actual joins on the schedule 10 and I'll have to just see how this comes out I'm definitely not a manifold expert just learning as I go so I'm making little errors and I'm trying to work around it I'll switch back over to the old original style gas lens because I use some of the ceramics and the bigger cups and as much as they're good on some things you just oh, I can't get in position on some of them it will do here it will do here as soon as I've got the next tube in the lens is no good so I'm opting to just go for this lens and try and carry on and do it all that way we've got our purge line connected to number four here so this one is being purged as we speak and I can probably turn that down a little bit now. That's running about five. Let's just drop it down. Four litres a minute on that purge line. And I'm now going to weld up this header here over this side. Because I don't want this tube, I don't want it tilting inwards as I weld all the way around. It had a bit of lean on it anyway, just how I made it, that's how it was, and my angles. So I'm going to weld the outsides of this one and this one to just try and pull it back over a little bit to make sure it doesn't lean right in. If it leans right in, it may end up kindering one of the other tubes. If it stays roughly where it is, it did have room for some movement and will be okay. One thing I could do with, this is a big, big jig and a tiny bloody bench so I really could do with a bigger bench for this but it's all I've got so we'll just have to make do so let's carry on and weld some of this up Turn that back to 100, still on 150 from doing the flange. between these few as I come around. Do what I find is my TIG finger. We go find my TIG finger and then come back. Picked up the TIG finger because everything's starting to get hot and what you don't want to do, which I've done there ever so slightly, is you don't want it where you've welded and then you rest your glove or your hand on there and you start melting bits of your glove to the runner as you're doing it because it will look terrible when it's finished. So I've got TIG Finger XL here that I can prop my arm on. See, this is red hot here, you won't want to touch that, but I can rest on there, no problem. This is a TIG Finger XL and this is from actually from weldingtipsandtricks.com. This is Jody's product, Weld Munga Stores. Don't buy the cheaper ones, don't buy the copies because they're nowhere near as good. I tried it, don't do it. Proper ones. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this on a time lapse because this is very time consuming and you don't wanna sit here and watch all this boring process. So I'm gonna time lapse the whole thing and I'll add it into the video. Look forward to watching.
decided to only show two runners on the uh, time lapse video. If not, it goes on a bit too long, I think. So we go straight now to the finished manifold. Just thought I'd show you this. This is the manifold that we've welded up, all completed. Now it isn't perfect. I'm quite happy with it, but there's a few spots where probably torch angle wasn't the best. So it's just trial and error. I'm learning. I never done one of these before, but what I wanted to show you was we had this flange bolted to here with four, um, what we're we using here, four M10 socket cap heads. And there's a tiny little bit of tolerance in it. But if you can just see my scribed line there, and then when we've unbolted it, this is released. So the whole manifold has pulled in, probably only, if I try and find my little rule somewhere around here, which typically I can't find. Uh, let's just try with this bigger one. We probably pulled in just over a millimetre. Now I know that's not a lot, but that just shows you even with it bolted fully in place, that's the tension that it's under. So we'll now release the flange and we'll see how flat that has stayed compared to um, how it is now when it's bolted down. So I'll release that and I'll show you that as well. Right, we've unbolted this side now. Now just to show, I've, I've put one of the bolts and the nuts back in here to stop the manifold tipping over and lifting up on this back edge because it's obviously the weight's overhanging there. But as you'll see, these are all undone now. And it has stayed almost perfect. Now obviously this will have a gasket on it anyway. This side has got the most deviation and it's very hard to show you, but that is it. So I'm really happy with the way the flange has stayed, stayed flat. So yeah, let's take the manifold off and let's give it a trial fit on the car.